coach on the picket line. So, uh, over to you, big hand for Chip. Hi, OK, right. How are you doing? Woo! All right, OK, so uh, I'm going to talk about uh, 10 minutes of your time. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to do it as a team. So poetry on the picket line, what's that? Uh, big cheer for the FPU. Yeah. So the FBU have got a pay rise. They're going to ballot on it. They've just said we're going to take strike action. They've balloted, they've got over the line, they said they're going to take strike action, they're getting made a better offer. They're going to have another ballot, let's see what happens. So, uh, I've brought solidarity from poetry on the picket line, I'll explain what, what that's about, and also from the PCS culture sector. Because uh, uh, I am a PCS branch chair, we were on strike on the 1st of February. I've just had to sit down with our Chief Operating Officer at work and explain to him that we're going to be on strike on March the 15th as well. I hope you guys will as well. So, poetry on the picket line and the, and the PCS culture sector, uh, they started off together almost because there was a strike seven years ago at the National Gallery. 111 days of strike action uh, and people were asked to go out and uh, make a few uh, positive, uh, supportive comments about all that sort of stuff. But 111 days of that gets quite, uh, quite tedious. So those of us who put pens and paper decided we might write some rhymes and talk some poetry on picket line instead. And that became a bit of a thing. So the junior doctors and the strikers at Picture House, and then onwards and upwards, uh, I was reminded on a Facebook stream this morning, that it was seven years ago that we were at the Royal London Hospital out in support of the junior doctors dispute. So we've been going ever since. Now what we do is we go out and we read poetry on picket lines. And that's slightly unusual. So as people are doing now, they take a film of it, they tweet it, they put it on Facebook. It's not been on social media, it hasn't happened, has it? <laughs> and then we retweet it or repost it uh, and we'll tag people in poetry and rock and roll people that we know uh, and that helps to spread the word and get the voice of the picket line into poetry and the voice of poetry on the picket line. Can't be a bad thing, can it? What we also do is we will tag your strike fund in our posts and then hope people retweet it. But more practically than that, we sell t-shirts, here's a t-shirt, and we sell books, and we do support gigs, all that sort of stuff, and we raise money. So, practically, here's a score, 20 quid, from Poetry to Picky Line, into your strike fund today. How's that? Thank you. Woo! So, three poems, not long ones, not long ones. This first one was the poem that we wrote uh, for uh, the National Gallery dispute, uh, and it is the title poem of my first collection. See, I'm not daft, am I? <laughs> uh, if you do want to get that, and you, there's a, a, a singer-songwriter activist called Joe Solo, if you look at his band camp page, and look at the Poetry on a Picket Line bundle, you'll get the Poetry on a Picket Line anthology and my collection at a price, and all that money will go to strike funds. Is that fair enough? <laughs> Making nothing for me. So, uh, uh, this, this is a poem, uh, uh, the title was about, about the current government, government and it applies to the one now as well, and it's called a class act, because that's, that's what they are, aren't they? they? A class act. It's the thin veneer that's so insulting, as if we should be grateful that they feel the need to lie at all. Decisions have been taken, still they are consulting their key stakeholders, the ones that fall between the quite unloved, unlucky and the unfortunate but undeserving poor. They'll play no real part in the big debate. Why do the haves need so much more to motivate them, whilst the have-nots, apparently, need so much less? How do we get ourselves into the story state? Can we trust the ones who promise to extract us from this mess? It seems to me to be one fundamental fatal flaw, a massive fault line in their master plan. They want it both ways. Want to get well in the good times and the bad. They want you with your head down, working for the man. They want to stop you spotting you've been had. Whilst those who want for nothing, they want more. So now we've government by clever knotting of the old school tie, and they'll do very nicely thank you out of boom and bust. So ask yourself, what does this signify? Is it a nasty accident or a betrayal of trust? The fact is, this is something that we've seen before. This is a class act. That's what this is. This is war. Solidarity comrades. 
So an even shorter one uh, that I wrote fairly recently after some negotiating with management. They closed our London office and after much negotiation we were allowed to keep our London waiting provided we came into Canary Wharf and land at a desk there and all that sort of stuff. And it was a bit fraud. So I wrote this part. It contains some cockney rhyming slang. Are you all right with cockney rhyming slang? Yeah. I bet the old R It's one of those poems that runs straight into the tile. And it's called, it's one thing. To have someone piss on your boots and tell you that it's raining. It's quite another thing to have someone wet up your daisies, look you in the eye and tell you that it's a beautiful day. <laughs> So I've won the finish. Uh, you know what this was about. You figure it out. It was written. Uh, it was written a half dozen years ago. You know what happened then. Uh, there was a big referendum, uh, and people got it right, right round their necks, didn't they? Uh, so this is called Ice Age, and it refers back to when the entire continent of Europe was covered by an enormous glacier, and there were no borders. As if cutting off your nose despite your face with successful cosmetic surgery, the British people have spoken. Democracy, inaction, the body politic broken. Bullshit, bluster and downright lies. It's no surprise when the disenfranchised stick two fingers up to the establishment. Who knows what they meant? Who ruined race relations? Who blamed immigration? Who sucked with the devil they knew was in the detail? It's an epic fail to recognise who's kicking you up the arse when it's the ruling class. The whole damn thing was a farce. Listen, let me articulate this clearly. Understand I mean it. When I say I mean it, I mean it most sincerely. I don't want to take my country back. I want to take it forward. Solidarity, comrades. Woo!